Ciao everyone, welcome back to another slow fashion video. I hope you're all well. Thank you for your patience while I took a little bit of a break. It's good to be back. I hope you had a wonderful summer. Uh, let's jump into today's video. I wanted to go over these ideas that I think perpetuate dissatisfaction in our closet. Where there is wardrobe dissatisfaction, there is unnecessary and mindless shopping, which is just no good. So I have put together this list of these false ideas that I think we need to start unlearning in order to build a more conscious closet that really feels like ourselves. And uh, hopefully you find these tips helpful. If you like the kind of content that encourages creativity instead of consumption, then uh, hit subscribe. I post every Sunday. You can also find me on IG. And I've also got a really fun live event coming up on September 25th at 1 p.m. EST. We are starting back up again with a new season Season of the live Shop Your Closet series. So I find inspiration looks and I don't shop my closet for the looks. I actually bring in two guests who have different bodies than I do, different sense of style and a whole different closet. And you as a ticket holder really get to do like a choose your own adventure. So you help me pick apart these outfits and together we style these very generous and wonderful guests that I bring on. It's a lot of fun. I will leave all of the details in the description box below. Uh, and let's uh, get into today's video. Oh, the perfect wardrobe. I mean, it obviously doesn't exist. We are bombarded with images on social media, in magazines, wherever, on YouTube, of perfectly curated closets. Our bodies change, our lives change, our style changes, and our climates and our environments change too. So your wardrobe and your clothes are constantly changing and evolving as well. I don't think you can ever have a perfect closet. Striving for that perfection can make us feel bad about ourselves, can make us feel bad about our clothes, and that can lead to shopping unnecessarily. I think once we accept the fact that things change, both internally and externally, your wardrobe satisfaction will like, I think, shoot up through the roof just because you've taken that stress off of yourself. Ah yes, the classic piece. I have perpetuated this idea of a classic item. It has been drilled into us that a classic item is like a plain black cardigan, a plain white button-up shirt, or a classic moto jacket. And yes, these are very timeless items, and a lot of them do suit my own aesthetic, but that might not be your classic. It's so easy to be drawn to an item and to purchase an item simply because it has been deemed classic. A really good example of this for me is a plain black cashmere cardigan that I purchased literally because it was on my list because it was a classic. That was a lot of air quotations that did not belong. Yeah, a cardigan is a fully versatile item. I would restyle it into like a wrap top and things like that, but it definitely wasn't as versatile for me because I didn't feel good in it, so I rarely wore it. Another really good example of this classic hole that we can fall into that is responsible for a lot of unnecessary purchases is the leather moto jacket. I purchased this faux leather jacket, which yes, I have used and I have worn, but I don't gravitate to it as much as this one, which I had purchased secondhand. But because a traditional leather moto was on like a thousand lists on the internet, I felt the need to buy this one. But I don't... Oh my god, that was a close one. So now, this one is actually just listed on my Depop page. I'll leave a link to my Depop down below. If you're not on Depop, it's a really, really fun uh, secondhand marketplace, a little bit like Poshmark, where you can actually converse with the sellers, which is pretty neat. Um, anyway, I'll leave that down there. But uh, yeah, goodbye. 
classic moto. This is a little bit like the classics trap. It's really a matter of identifying what a staple is in your closet. I actually think there's a huge difference between a closet basic and a closet staple. A basic, in my opinion, is exactly what it says it is. Something very plain that has no identifying detail or specific style or specific aesthetic. It really is like the glue that brings your closet together. A closet staple, however, looks so different for everyone. It is that item, in my opinion, that is like the star of your wardrobe. Something that when you put it on, you always feel good. So it could be a really beautiful blouse with some interesting detailing. Or maybe it's a really great pair of high-waisted flare leg jeans with a cool pocket or button detail. There's always something that makes it special and unique to you. I actually think I could make an entire video on basics versus staples if you want me to do that. Leave that in the comments below. But for now, I think it's so important to identify those staples for you. They are truly pieces that stand alone and shine on their own and make you feel awesome. I have done this before. I have fully seen something on an influencer or I found myself starting to adopt or wanting to adopt the aesthetic of an influencer who I really, really love. But when I pause and take a step back, I realize that their style isn't really my own. They live in a climate that is so different from mine. So consuming content through your own perspective and your own lens is so important in not getting caught up and making purchases that just don't make sense to you. One of the biggest revelations my clients have in their virtual styling sessions is the ability to mix and match clothes from different uh, utilities and different categories in their closets. I think like maybe in the early aughts there was this thing like you had your going out tops, but the coolest styles are often from mixing these different categories within your own closet. Not only can you come up with different combinations that you likely haven't thought of, thus making your closet feel new and fresh without even shopping, doing this mixing of categories within your own closet can also help you change or evolve your style without shopping. So just by doing that little remix, you can test out a new aesthetic without having to go out and buy something new that might not work out. Ultimately, we need to give ourselves permission to wear our clothes in different ways. Clothing doesn't come with a set of rules as to how they should be worn. That is entirely up to you. Here's another one that when I used to do in-person personal styling years ago, I remember clients would always get frustrated that, you know, the knees would bunch in their jeans or that they couldn't perfectly tuck their pant leg into a boot. Glossy, perfected images in magazines and on social media have led us to believe that our very real and messy and imperfect daily lives had to look like this static image. Thank God we don't live in a static world. We move and we sweat and we sit for hours at a time, although maybe we shouldn't. We should probably get up and do some exercise. Anyway, all of these things make it virtually impossible for our clothes to look perfectly styled all the time. It's just impossible. So similarly to my last point, I think as soon as we stop embracing that need for perfection in our aesthetic, 
feeling good about what we're wearing and what's in our closet gets a lot easier. And I think I'm gonna stop it here because this video, I mean, I could probably go on forever. Let me know if you'd like a part two in the description box below. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new or if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget I have those tickets for sale for the Live Shop Your Closet event on September 25th. I would love to have you there. Uh, that'll be in the description box as well. Much love. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will be back with another slow fashion video. Ciao!